Hello everyone, I'm Andy Pruitt, Director of Communications and Technology with Charleston County School District. Normally when we do a Stories of CCSD segment, we get right into the story. However, for this one, we felt it was important to explain what it's about beforehand. We are seeing extremely positive growth numbers in several grades at Julian Mitchell Math and Science Elementary School, so we wanted to highlight how it's being accomplished. You have a combination of very dedicated and talented teachers, a positive school climate, and significant community partnerships. Growth is happening throughout CCSD, thanks to our teachers, staff, and community partners. We are doing this story to showcase one example of how a school is tailoring its instruction and support of students. This represents what we are seeing in so many schools, again, especially due to the hard and strategic work of our teachers and administrators. And now, please enjoy the newest chapter in the stories of CCSD. And get ready for science. Take out your science notebooks. It's a school-wide effort. And when you as a teacher embrace your class, and they are your students, they are your children, you want to see every child succeed in the classroom. So it's taking them from where they are, helping them to meet their goal, having that rigor in the classroom, because ultimately you want all children to succeed, no matter who they are, no matter where they are. Allison Rouse and Margot Coyne are the second grade teachers at Mitchell Elementary. And that approach you heard Rouse explain is helping students experience incredible success. Looking at the numbers for measures of academic progress, or MAP, 67% of Mitchell second graders in the 15-16 school year met or exceeded their annual growth target in reading, 61% in math. Then, in the 16-17 school year, 77% of Mitchell second graders reached or surpassed their growth target, second best number for all CCSD second grades in reading, and 87% did the same in math, the highest number in the district for second graders. Why is this significant? Mitchell has historically had a high poverty rate. According to the most recent data, the State Department of Education website lists the percentage of students in poverty at 94.9% .9 for the 15-16 school year. So the first step in student growth is meeting the needs of the whole child. It's not like you're alone when you're trying to help this kid grow and be all that they can be, you know that the guidance counselor is going to come in and get them clothes if they need them. You know if um, you know, they need food, they're going to get it. Every little need is going to get met and then it makes your job like easier, like you're, you're that village raising that child together. Children who are in the Title I district or in a Title I school, there has to be, their needs have to be met first. At Mitchell, we meet their needs through a variety of community partnerships. Once the needs of students are met, then the learning can occur. The students aren't the only ones supported. The teachers and staff at the school say there is a positive school climate in part to the veteran leadership of Principal Debbie Smith. She gives the teachers the freedom to try different things when it comes to supporting and encouraging the students. Ms. Smith really respects the veteran teachers and she creates a climate during like professional developments and faculty meetings where people will speak up about how they feel about anything. And she always celebrates the successes, just the, even the little tiniest ones. It's always positive. When there's a celebration, we celebrate with them just like you would with a family member. And I think that generally contributes to the overall staff morale here. And therefore we create a staff that do not want to leave and they're here year after year. If it's one through 20 adding fluently and subtracting, then I'm gonna break it, break it down. One of the staff initiatives leading to growth is data-driven decisions. The teachers use results to identify where the students are and craft their instruction to provide detailed support. And it is done constantly through the school year. And it's not just taking the, the piece of paper that has their scores and saying, okay, let's group them up. It's taking those kids and sitting them down and letting them look at it and say, this is a color code, you're here, you're here. And they're okay accepting that they're all at different levels because they have that community that they've been taught. When you are working with students in needs, it is imperative that you have a partner that also sees the vision that you see, which is to make children take them where they are and grow. And with my team partner, Mrs. Coyne, we do exactly that. We meet the needs of our students in the classroom and ultimately to see them grow. All of our teachers, and especially the second grade team, uh, re really zeroed in on the students' individual data and taking them from where they should be and seeing how much a year's worth of growth and then a year and a half's worth of growth would be 
and then benchmarking that throughout the year to see how they can make that growth with those students. Outcomes from the growth numbers are also shared with one of the school's community partners, Charleston Hope. That's a nonprofit started by Low Country Native College of Charleston graduate and former student teacher at Mitchell, Emily Hoisington. Their group is providing strategic mentorship to students based on lesson plans and instruction crafted by teachers at the school. Our classroom mentors are kind of just that extra hands-on, one-on-one attention since you know all of our students can't receive that attention from one teacher. We're just kind of that additional piece. Charleston Hope volunteers, who are mostly CFC students, met with Coyne and Rouse during this past summer. The meeting wasn't about providing input, it was about learning how they could help the teachers and ultimately the students. And that feeling of them knowing that they're prepared and Ms. Hoisington will survey them afterwards after they come in the classroom and say like, how did it go? How do you like working with that teacher? And giving the feedback from her, then I can tweak and adjust what I need for those mentors too. You just can't throw materials at someone and say, here, work on this group. It takes planning. And that's exactly what we did this summer with our Charleston Hope classroom mentors. We planned with them so that when they do come in the classroom, they will be prepared and know exactly what to do to help meet the needs of our students. They invested over 520 hours this past school year in the first and second grade here at Mitchell alone. And so to see that those hours have purpose and actually, you know, really make an impact, there's nothing like it. The staff and volunteers from Charleston Hope have been part of the Mitchell family for a few years now, a growing family that is celebrating positive results that will have a lasting impact on this downtown Charleston community. For the stories of CCSD, I'm Andy Pruitt.